breadths of sport, blessed by nature, trained like derby winners. For Ben Johnson, it's meant four hours a day, six days a week for the past 11 years, to become the best at something that's done by almost every person on the face of the earth. It is probably the single most selective of all uh, sports. It's the most competitive uh, single human endeavor. And additionally, it is purely physical. Uh, there's no tactics involved. There are no Pete Roses out there who can beat you with their brain power or their, their uh, savvy or what have you. You know, it's just simply get out there and do it. You know, uh, that's all. It's just purely physical. But running itself may not be the hardest part. Ben Johnson can bench press over 400 pounds, about two and a half times his own weight. Push, 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 push. The power generated by these arms is one of the factors that has made him the ultimate running machine. In fact, Johnson is helping to turn the art of running into a science. At the University of Ottawa, Gordon Robertson, a professor of biomechanics, uses computers to digitize Johnson's movements to measure the velocities and accelerations of muscles in motion. We're still learning from the athletes how people move. It won't be long before we'll be able to tell them how they should move. When you analyze a single stride of Ben Johnson sprinting, what do you learn? Um, when he uh, picks up his leg from the ground, um, his foot is moving at close to zero velocity. But when it passes underneath his leg, it's going at 80 kilometers per hour. To do that, he uses 3,500 watts of power in the muscles that drive up the, uh, the knee. What that means is that with every stride, Johnson could generate enough electricity to light up a city block. Science may eventually improve what nature provides, but sprinters are born, not made. Even as a 90-pound adolescent, Ben Johnson had the two main prerequisites, lightning reactions and what they call high-twitch muscle fibers, fibers which produce huge amounts of power very quickly. The statistics defy imagination. Johnson, here out in front, covers about 36 feet, almost 10 meters, every second. At top speed, he's going 43 kilometers per hour. Jeff Gowan is the head of the Coaching Association of Canada. These men are striding at around four and a half strides a second. And they spend 50 to 60 percent of that time in the air. Now, every time you're in the air, between strides, so to speak, or between ground contacts, you are actually losing speed. So you have about a tenth of a second only to apply huge forces to the ground. The top-class sprinter, if he's very, very good indeed, can only continue to accelerate for about six, six and a half, seven seconds, by which stage is at about the 70, 75 meter mark. Then he starts to slow down remarkably enough. And there's a great skill involved in trying to maintain as much momentum over that last 20 or 30 meters as possible. And that's where the real skill of the great sprinter comes in. So he's endowed with the right qualities, tremendous central nervous system, great fast twitch high energy fibers, and blended with that is patient nurture as a result of superb coaching. And Ben is a product of all of those things. But if there's a single element which distinguishes Ben Johnson, it's his start. Most sprinters get into the blocks one leg at a time, and they leave the same way. But Johnson virtually jumps out with both feet simultaneously. His is the fastest start in the world. In fact, two months ago at the World Indoor Championships in Indianapolis, it may have been too fast. Because races are won or lost at the start, where nerves and timing are razor sharp, false starts are common. Under the rules, any pressure exerted on the block sooner than 120 one thousandths of a second after the gun goes off is considered a false start. No one, it's believed, could react that quickly. At the World Championships, the 60-meter race was called back and a false start was charged to Ben Johnson. It was only afterwards that officials discovered Johnson's start had, in fact, been legal. But he'd reacted to the gun so quickly, in 127 one-thousandths of a second, that the starter had made a mistake. So he's only seven one-thousandths of a second away from having an illegal start when he is likely 
turning on his muscles after the gun is fired. But his reactions so fast, are so fast. That's right. His reactions are so fast, he's going to break the standard, and he'll be called every race. The race was restarted, and Johnson won it. They may soon not only have to change the rules on reaction times for him, but move back the walls at the end of the track as well. Johnson's time in Indianapolis was 6.41 seconds, a new world record. Now his sights are set on the 100 meter mark outdoors, 9.93. When you look ahead and think about the world record or think about the Olympic Games, will you know when the day comes when you set that record? I know when the day comes. And when you feel that way, how fast can you go? The world record's now 9.93. How yes, fast can you go? Time will tell. Oh, well, I, I have a very good day. I, I'll take you on honor 990.